Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Olivia and today, guys, I love these videos. We're gonna be doing my September and October reading wrap up. I usually try to combine two months of reading into one wrap up video because I read about four to five books each month on average, I wanna say. And I feel like it's just more fun to talk about a bunch of books in one big video. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. I counted on my Goodreads and I think in September and October, I read about nine books. I guess we'll see today. <laughs> so without further ado, let's just jump into it. I'm so excited, so many fun books. Let's do it. Okay, I just pulled up Goodreads. I'm gonna do my best to go in order of the books that I read. So the first book that I read in September was Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. This is the first book in the Knock 'em Out trilogy and the Knock 'em Out trilogy, guys, it's so much fun. It basically takes place in this small town and follows like three different couples in this small town. And so this first book follows a girl named Naomi and a guy named Knox. And you have a fun little grumpy sunshine trope going on. They start off on the completely wrong foot and long story short Naomi's sister like abandons her daughter so now Naomi has to like watch her niece that she didn't know existed and she obviously is like stepping into a different role and you get to see her struggle and connect with Knox and it's honestly really fun. I gave this book a four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. The only thing I wasn't a huge fan of was the grumpy sunshine trope in here just because for me sometimes when there's like a grumpy guy character I'm like hey you got them to be nice to you by the end but like how are they like just a better person now to everybody? you know? But yeah, take this as your sign to pick this book up if you haven't yet, because it was just so much fun to read. Okay, the next book that I read in September, this one I actually started, I think in August and was listening to it and reading it for like a while and ended up finishing it in September. And that book is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. First things first, just look at the sheer number of pages in this bad boy. Like this thing is definitely the largest book I've read potentially since Harry Potter. Like this thing is so, so giant. And I honestly really loved this book. I ended up giving it a 4.5 out of five stars. Reason being the beginning of this book and by beginning, I mean like the first 500 pages were a little bit slow in my opinion. Like I didn't feel like a ton was happening. That's not to say that slow is like synonymous with bad. I personally don't feel that way at all. It just wasn't super action packed and I do really enjoy like action scenes. I'm not gonna talk about this for too long, but on the off chance that you haven't heard about this series, this is actually the fifth and so far final book in the Akatar series by Sarah J. Mass. And this series essentially takes place in a world where humans and Fae are divided by this wall. They like don't interact anymore. And a girl named Feyre, after a series of events, gets swept off into the Fey realm, and she's human, and things just kind of go crazy. And this book is actually about like a different character in the series. So what I just described was the first book, and then this is obviously like a few books later. But yeah, 4.5 out of 5, really good, and also really spicy. I feel like sometimes people like to know that before starting a book, so this is definitely like on the spicy side. So yeah. That was A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. Sometimes I just get really enthusiastic and then I'm literally winded by the end of filming these videos. All right, the next book that I read in still September is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. If you guys watched my reading vlog, you know that I read this like exceptionally quickly because I like fell and couldn't walk. So I was stuck on the couch watching shows and reading books. And so I read this fun little YA like I think it would be considered a mystery. And I feel like the one thing to know about Jennifer Lynn Barnes, at least that I would say, is her writing is so incredibly fast paced. Like I think if I didn't injure myself, I still would have flown through this book incredibly quickly. The Inheritance Games follows a girl named Avery. And one day she literally just inherits like a billion dollars. And she has no idea why. She has no idea who this man is that's giving her his money and the only way for her to actually get it like get the money is to live in his house for a year and his family's there and there's like trap doors and secret passageways and so you can imagine that there's a lot of like 
don't know, tension running high and just like fun mystery elements and riddles. And honestly, so much fun. You could definitely feel that this was like for younger audiences or like written for like all ages, dare I say. I wouldn't say it felt like the most mature, but that's not to say it wasn't a fantastic time. So I gave this book a four out of five stars. I'm definitely going to continue the series. Again, not sure when, probably whenever it's ready for me at the library actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was super fun. And once again, I would absolutely recommend this if you happen to come across it. I'm actually really proud of myself. A lot of the books that I read in September mostly September, a little bit October, were books that I had on my physical TBR. I love it when I work my way through books that I already own. I try to keep my physical TBR on the lower side. So it feels really good to be like going through all these because I know I didn't go out and buy them like for a video or just to have them. Anyway, <laughs> the next book that I read in September and finished it in October is The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. This was a book that I've had for, I want to say, almost a year now. My best friend gifted me this book because she read the series and loved it. This book, so fun. If you guys have seen The Hobbit or The Lord of the Rings films, I feel like they captured the vibes of this story so well. This book follows a little hobbit named Frodo and he goes on this like super magical, super fun adventure and he has this like magical ring um, and this ring is really powerful. It has the power to like influence people. I don't want to say too much in case you haven't heard about these books or about the plot maybe. I feel like most people are familiar with these stories. And this ring, again, is incredibly dangerous, and so he has to get rid of it. But getting rid of it is harder than you would think. And so he makes a bunch of friends on his journey and forms a little fellowship. And honestly, guys, it's so fun. If you are considering getting into classics, a lot of people, I feel like my recommendations would be The Great Gatsby, The Picture of Dorian Gray, or this. This book was so easy to read. I was worried that it was like gonna go over my head or I wasn't gonna understand things at times or it would be so like slow that I wouldn't love it, but I really enjoyed it. I gave this a four out of five stars because the middle of it was a little bit slow. Again, that doesn't mean bad. It just means slow. So yeah, I did really enjoy this. I had so much fun. I'm so grateful that I finally got to it and checked it off. So yeah, that was The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. Okay, we are fully in October now. So the next book that I read in October, I it's no secret, I'd been wanting to read this for a really long time. I picked it up at the bookstore a while ago and I didn't let myself read it because the second book in the series ends on a cliffhanger and the third book wasn't out yet. All of this is to say, in October, I read Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. This is your Quinn essential fairy tale. It just feels like an old Disney movie and like magic and coziness and fun. This story follows a girl named Evangeline and the book starts out with her she's heartbroken. The boy that she loves is engaged to somebody else and she doesn't know what to do about it or how to handle her feelings. So she goes and she makes a deal with a fate, but you really aren't supposed to do that. <laughs> we learn that pretty quickly because there's a bunch of consequences that come from her making a deal with this fate and her and the Prince of Hearts, who is the fate, go on this big adventure. And that's what happens in this book. I had a lot of fun. I will say a lot of people who I saw read this series are like obsessed with it. And I really just had the experience of like, this is a fun, enjoyable fantasy series. Like it definitely isn't one of my favorites that I've ever read. I also read The Ballad of Never After, which is the second book in this series in October. There's a few books in between, but we'll just, we'll start to jump around. And The Ballad of Never After, I personally enjoyed more than this book. So Once Upon a Broken Heart, I gave a three stars. No, 
3.5. It was good, so much fun. The characters were great. Genuinely, it was really fun, but it didn't stand out to me in any way. And then a few books later, <laughs> I read The Ballad of Never After. And again, that story just continues with this deal that Evangeline has made. And I thought it was better. I felt like the characters were a little bit more fleshed out and it did end on a crazy cliffhanger. So I'm actually reading the third book now and I'm having a lot of fun with it. So yeah, I gave The Ballad of Never After four stars. Okay, so we're backtracking a little bit. Sorry, I'm jumping around. Once Upon a Broken Heart, then I jumped ahead and talked about The Ballad of Never After. Now we're going back. So after Once Upon a Broken Heart, I read The Dead Romantics on my Kindle. Um, the Dead Romantics is written by Ashley Poston, Ashley Poston. We're going to go with Ashley Poston. And this was actually such like a big surprise for me. I do a little book club with my best friend from college every holiday, if that makes sense. So for Halloween, we read a romance, like a Halloween romance. For Christmas, we read a Christmas romance. And then over spring break, we try to do like a spring break or like summery romance. And this year, our Halloween romance that we decided on together was The Dead Romantics. And this is a book that I'd seen like kind of all over the place. And for some reason, it like never grabbed my attention at all. Like I saw it and then I would just keep, keep going. Like it really didn't grab me. I don't know why. And when I tell you guys that I loved this book. I like, I can't even put into words how much I adored her writing, adored the characters, appreciated the storyline and the concepts that were talked about in this book. It was so good. <laughs> um, but basically the dead romantics is about this girl. She lives in New York city and she is a ghost writer for this famous romance author. And she has the ability to see ghosts. So you have this element of like magical realism. So like the ghosts aren't like a huge thing in the story. It's just kind of like a thing that she can do. And she ends up, she has a meeting with her publisher. I think he's her publisher. I don't know about the book that she's writing. And very shortly after she gets called home to go back home to her small town to deal with something that happened there. And long story short, she sees her publisher at home in this small town, but now he's a ghost. Mm -hmm. Didn't see that coming. And so my whole thing going into this book and the reason I think I was avoiding it is because I didn't think I would enjoy like a ghost romance thing. Like I just was like, how is that going to work? But I really loved it. Like the, the romance was so good. The writing was so good. And also like, like themes of grief were very like, strongly dealt with in this story which is something I hadn't really seen before like there's definitely an Emily Henry vibe in the sense that it felt like more than just a romance it felt like literary fiction and romance and I really appreciated like the romance plot line and just like the elements of literary fiction that were involved and again it was just so fun and so fast-paced so I gave it a 4.75 there were a few like things about the plot that just like didn't I didn't quite love, so I didn't give it like a full five stars, but overall I absolutely adored it. And like, it doesn't matter that it's not October anymore. I'm begging you guys <laughs> to go read this book or another book by her. It was so fun. Whew. Okay guys, we're so close. Um, okay, yeah, this is a fun one. So the next book that I read in October was Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. I've talked about this in like a bunch of previous videos, so I'm not gonna dive into this too deeply. I have read half of this series and that was like years ago and I kind of forgot everything that happened. And so in 2023 and 2024, I wanna give the Throne of Glass series another chance, finish it from start to end. And so I decided to start my reread of this series in October and I read Throne of Glass. This is the first book in the series and it's so much fun. If you guys enjoy stories that have like trials or competitions, that's like a huge aspect of this book. There's romance, the main girl, she's an assassin and she's competing to be like the king's assassin like his champion like it's just so fun like everything that happens in here i just love it i don't know like again i've talked about this so many times so i'm not going to dive into it but if you like action if you like romance romance isn't as big of a thing in here if you like magic 
just go pick this up. It's so good. And I'm definitely planning to continue the series in November. This is so cute, all the books right here. I think the, the last few that I read were on my Kindle. Okay, yeah, so I read The Ballad of Never After, After Throne of Glass, and I read that on my Kindle. The final book that I read in October, yeah, in October was A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham. This is a thriller. I honestly really enjoy thrillers. I just don't read a ton of them because I am a little skittish. Like I'm definitely someone who's easily scared by things. I have to kind of time it right when I read thrillers, but this one was recommended by a good friend. And I went on vacation in October and I had like, plans to read a bunch of the things that got picked in my TBR video that I did, the October TBR jar. But when it came down to it, and I was like thousands of feet up in the air on the plane, I didn't have a lot of them downloaded. I thought I did, like I put them on my Kindle before, but I think it because it was through my library, something didn't go right. So I already had a flicker in the dark downloaded on my Kindle from Kindle Unlimited. So I was like, all right, I guess this is what I'm gonna be reading. And it was honestly really good. Also, it's super creepy. Like I've been having nightmares for like a week. But again, I've told you that I am the kind of person that just gets scared easily. So I don't think most people would have this experience, but it follows a girl who when she was young in her like small town in Louisiana, there was this string of like kidnapping and murders of like young teenage girls. It was happening like when she was that age. And so she had to like stay home and protect herself or whatever. And it turns out that the killer was her dad. This is not a spoiler. This is literally how the book starts. And so the actual story takes place like 20 years later, her dad's in prison and these events, young girls start to go missing again. And it's really triggering for her and all that kind of stuff. And so you're kind of on this journey with her trying to figure out, is it connected to her dad? Is this someone else? Are girls actually dying? Like all this kind of stuff. And the plot twists in here just keep coming. Like they were really, really good. I feel like when I read thrillers, I'm like, trying to figure it out so like everything every crumb that the author gives me I'm trying to like connect them and figure it out and so for this book I don't know I was just questioning everybody I don't know how else to say that like I did not trust a single character in this book but it was really really good I gave it a four stars honestly I might bump it to a 4.5 I really really liked it but I genuinely think just because the themes in here were so creepy and like scary to me I just can't like in good conscience for myself give it that five star because I know I'll never read it again. Oh no, my camera is about to fill up. I'm gonna have to film another clip. My camera just, the storage just filled up. So this is a new clip, but regardless, those are the nine books that I read in September and October. I feel really, really good about the, like those two reading months. Genuinely, I don't, feel like I usually read that many books. It's probably partly because I was on vacation and I could just like lay by the pool and read a book. So that was really nice. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys have read any of these books or the ones that I read on my Kindle or from the library. And yeah, it's November now and I'm so pumped to have hopefully another good month of reading. We'll see with the holidays coming up, who knows? But yeah, without further ado, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and a fantastic reading month and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, you guys, <laughs> bye.